This is the 2023 Mac Studio with the M2 Max, and it's been my primary workhorse for a couple of months now. I've been using it for everything from photo and video editing to coding, 3D modeling, gaming, amongst a host of other things. And with all of those use cases, there's aspects of this machine that I absolutely love and a few things that I'm not too keen on. And today, I wanna dive into what that experience has been like, what the Mac Studio does really well and what it doesn't. So if you're looking to pick one of these up, maybe you have one and you wanna compare your experience or you're just here for a dose of entertainment, stick around and let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. In the past couple of years, I've used pretty much every Apple Silicon Mac that's been released, but up until the last couple of months, the one that I hadn't tried was the Mac Studio. Since the M-Series chips came out in 2020, I've bounced around from using M1 MacBook Airs and M1 Mac Minis to M1 and M2 Pro machines. They've all been great, but as this channel has grown, so have the demands of my workflow in respect to what I need out of a machine. I seem to be using more and more system resources, and because of that, the Mac Studio has been on my radar over the last year or so, so when the latest this version with the M2 Max was announced in June. I had to pick one up and who are we kidding? I'm gonna try out most Macs these days because that's kind of what we do here. The model that I have here is the base model. So this is a 512 gig SSD, 32 gigs of RAM and an M2 Max chip with a 12 core CPU and a 30 core GPU. It's 3.7 inches tall and 7.7 .7 inches in diameter. And I'd say that's relatively small considering all that's packed in here. For the most part, I really like the design. It does only come in silver, which I'm not too concerned about. The only thing that I'd wish they'd done differently is on the bottom with this black ring. This is kind of a plasticky material and while it does keep both the studio and the desk from scratching, unlike the Mac Mini where the bottom does scratch up over time, I wish it was more of a rubberized surface because it does slide around quite a bit when you're plugging things in. For me, that's mainly when I'm putting in SD cards, which I'm popping in and out of here every day. I find I need an extra hand on the studio, otherwise it slides backwards, which I'd say is a minor annoyance. Another thing with that SD card reader, I find it's it's not as good as other readers I've used on premium USB hubs and docks where depending on the card, I might have to pop it in and out a couple of times for it to show up in Mac OS. I am curious if anyone else with a Mac Studio has experienced this or if it's just me. So if you have, drop a comment down below and let me know. Most folks probably aren't using the SD card slot a ton, but because I'm obviously working on a lot of video and photo content, it's definitely something that's important to me. Beside that port on the front, you've got two 10 gigabit per second USB-C ports, and those are great for these little USB 3.2 Gen 2 external drives that I use frequently for storage. And on the back, there's four USB-C Thunderbolt 4 ports capable of 40 gigabits per second. There's two USB-A ports that run at five gigabits, a 10 gigabit ethernet connection, HDMI port, and a headphone jack. Those back ports clearly aren't as accessible and most of what I have plugged in there stays plugged in. I've got a Thunderbolt SSD enclosure that I always keep connected, which I edit most of these videos from. All my desktop accessories like my Opal C1 webcam, my screen bar, phone and watch charger, and my speakers. The odd time I'll have to do the old reach around to find a USB port, which can be a bit of a pain, but I don't think you're gonna find much difference there versus any other desktop machine. The one thing that I really like about this year's studio is the HDMI port is improved. This can now support 4K up to 240 hertz, where it used to be that all HDMI on Macs, including the 2022 studio, could only support 4K at 60 hertz, or if you had a 1440p ultra wide monitor, it would top out at 100. For me, that meant using up a Thunderbolt port on some monitors, which isn't ideal, so definitely nice not to have to worry about that any longer. My current display is only running at 4K 60 hertz, but there are times when I test different monitors for the channel, and if something else comes along in the future that I want that supports high refresh rates. It's just nice to know that there's increased support there. Like I said, I do have that external SSD plugged in at all times. And with those Thunderbolt speeds, I get about the same speeds on that drive as something like the 512 gig SSD that's in the MacBook Air, which is just a touch slower than the internal drive on the studio. I usually see speeds of around 26 to 2700 megabytes per second read and write on this external drive versus just over 3000, give or take on the studio SSD. This is the base version, so that 512 gig SSD does run at about half the speed as the options above it. And if this were earlier in the year, I probably would have thought that that would have made a considerable difference in performance. But after having used an M2 Pro machine with a one terabyte SSD that runs at twice the speed, I can safely say that I honestly can't really tell the difference most of the time. I'm sure there will be some edge cases where you can notice it, but in my day today, I've never really found that to be a bottleneck. 
And with running a 512 gig internal drive and offloading a lot of my work to a larger external one, there's been more than enough space for me to store anything that I've needed. With video editing, the M2 Max has been a beast. In Final Cut Pro, where I previously would have had to have some background processing and optimizations turned on to effectively work through my timeline, I have that stuff all turned off on my Mac Studio and everything is buttery smooth most of the time and that keeps my project file super small as well. This does have two video encoding engines, which I don't know if I could live without now. Basically with any of these videos or the content that I make for myself or the brands that I work with, it's gonna export them twice as fast as any of the M2 machines below it. And that's because those lower options only have one encoding engine. Some folks might not care about that, but if you're doing frequent exports, it can be a big time saver. The M2 Max paired with 32 gigs of RAM is not only great for video work, but also for multitasking. For me, my work isn't a linear process most of the time, so I might be editing a video and then working away on a thumbnail and flipping between those with a browser and a bunch of tabs open at the same time. And just that alone can pull quite a lot of resources, but I've never felt like it was anything that this machine couldn't handle. There's never any slowness and it rarely ever hangs in any processes. Coding has also been super snappy, although full disclosure, I mentioned this last week as well, but most of my software projects these days aren't very complex and they're just for learning and trying to retain my skill set a bit but I'm pretty confident that you can throw a lot at it there without any issues. And with other graphically intensive work like 3D modeling, it's the same story there. I'll pop into Blender and play around from time to time, maybe to work on something just for fun or an animation for the channel, and everything is very smooth without any choppiness. There's decent render times, and I do know some animators that use the Mac Studio in a professional setting for both 3D work and in After Effects, so it's more than capable in almost any situation. I've even tried some gaming on here, which has worked reasonably well. There's not a whole lot of games that I own that I can play, but the ones that I do have run surprisingly well, albeit not as good as a PC with a nice dedicated video card. I am really looking forward to the new gaming mode that's coming with macOS Sonoma to see if that gives this any boost. I do have Sonoma installed on my MacBook Air, but because I use the studio as my main work machine, I'm not too keen on using a beta operating system on it, so I'll have to wait for the production release. Gaming probably isn't on most folks' minds when they're looking at a Mac anyway, but regardless, the performance on here has been outstanding in almost every aspect. I couldn't ask for more, but there are a couple of other things that I'm not too fond of with the studio. These are smaller things, but I think they're worth mentioning. The audio that comes out of the studio is pretty abysmal. I thought it would at least be better than on the Mac Mini, but it sounds relatively the same in my opinion, which is unfortunate given that super thin laptops like the MacBook Air have great sound. Maybe Apple just takes for granted that because it's a desktop, you're gonna have your own speakers, but if you're gonna offer a premium device, I think you should at least offer something that sounds half decent or just not include a speaker at all. This sounds very tinny and flat, and I I suppose you could use it in a pinch, but you're much better off connecting audio via the 3.5 millimeter output or through Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, which is the final thing that I want to touch on. Let me just preface this by saying the studio does have Bluetooth 5.3 and Wi-Fi 6E, which is an improvement over the 2022 version. And provided you have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi capable devices, most of the time this works fantastic. I've had zero issues with Bluetooth and with my Wi-Fi 6E mesh system, I normally see speeds that are about one to 200 megabits per second faster than my Wi-Fi 6 devices. The only thing that I find a little strange is that with Wi-Fi 6E, it does tend to drop out of the six gigahertz band at times. This seems to have gotten better over time, but for some reason, it appears as though the six gig band is almost always connected for me in the morning. But then when I check it in the afternoon, it's on the five gig one, and I do notice a drop in performance on that band. I'm not sure if this is some kind of attempt at optimization or if this is a bug or what exactly is going on there, but I would prefer if it stayed on the six gig band just because there is less traffic and noise versus the five gig one with so many devices already running on it. Those couple of things are probably nitpicking. They're not really issues that would deter me from buying this. And overall, I've been extremely satisfied with the Mac Studio. The performance has been outstanding, it looks good, and it takes up almost no space at my desk. It's also dead silent with whatever it is that I throw at it, and I have zero regrets with this purchase. This does come in at $1,999, so it's not the cheapest in the world. And if you are looking for a desktop Mac with high performance, and maybe you don't wanna spend this much, especially if you're not doing any video editing and using those encoding engines, or they're not important to you, the Mac Mini with the M2 Pro is another option that starts at around $1,299, I believe where you're still gonna get a ton of performance and a lot of the same benefits of the studio. That's worth checking out in that scenario and can still do most tasks fine, but if you're looking for a machine that's gonna last a long time and be able to do almost everything that you throw at it, you can't go wrong with a Mac Studio. I will leave links in the description to some of the stuff that I mentioned in this video, like all my accessories that I use at my desktop, which 
By the way, I'm gonna be doing an updated video on these little external SSDs that I've been doing a bunch of research on and I find super interesting. So stay tuned for that and a bunch of the new upcoming Apple stuff. That's it for me today. I hope you found this video useful or enjoyable. If you did, feel free to hit that like button. If you wanna see more tech related content or start an outdoor car wash business where we wash cars in white t-shirts and move in slow motion to 80s rock music, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next upload.